Hey and welcome guys. Uh, today we're going to take a break from modeling and do a toy customization. Uh, this is uh, Kenner's A-Wing as you can see right here. Now I've already opened the box and I've taken it out and taken a look at it. So it's just a quick look. Let's set this box down. And here's our A-Wing. It's a really nice size. It's uh, about a foot long. It's uh, about nine inches wide. Uh, definitely has some issues though. It has the the raised panel lines. Um, it's not horrible. Uh, I think we can work with that. The guns are, are really kind of weird. Uh, they kind of angle off this side. They should be straight over the top of each other. So we'll be looking at changing those. Maybe it looks like it wouldn't be too hard to rebuild that with some brass tubing. Maybe make it a little bit more accurate. We have some clear plastic parts in here. Of course we have the landing gear. Now what I'd like to do is uh, of course take it apart and I'd like to light the model. I'd like to try to light some of the uh, cockpit area, of course light uh, the two main engines, and build a little display perhaps uh, like inside the Death Star when it's going toward the reactor and you have all those tubing and conduits and different things uh, along that side. Maybe have it uh, mounted at an angle. And it comes with a pilot action figure. Just your kind of standard action figure. I don't think there's a need to totally do repaint him but maybe we can uh, give him some wash and some dry brushing and different things to kind of bring out the detail on him. Of course put like a dull coat and I think he'd look all right. So the goal of this project is not to make a you know an accurate scale model of what we see it's just to have a fun build with this. So let's get started. All right so here we are we have it all taken apart. It was fairly simple to take apart. I think it was only about eight little screws to, that was holding it all together. Uh, one thing I did is I removed this uh, landing gear mechanism. We're not going to have that. The landing gear is going to be fixed inside. I've uh, put some styrene plastic to seal over the landing bay doors. Uh, now this probably won't be visible if, if everything works out the, the way I'm hoping. The uh, ship will be kind of flying and you'll just basically see the top side and then you'll have a uh, background this is that uh, this is above so I'm not too worried about that but we close that off uh, we removed the uh, pilot now we've uh, taken the pilot and I've applied a little wash to them this uh, like a black wash and then I did some dry brushing I did a little burnt uh, umber uh, wash around his face um, I was cleaning it up and I accidentally removed his uh, paint off his eyes so I'm in the process of trying to repaint his eyes right there. And I did a little dry brushing with some silver just to give his uh, uh, uniform, uh, the chest plate and stuff and the helmet a little bit of a worn look. And uh, this uh, little piece here is just a piece of uh, greebly I had and uh, I'm trying to find a way to attach that so when he sits inside the uh, cockpit it'll look like he's actually uh, controlling some kind of throttle or, or gear or something of that nature. So pretty happy with that. We'll probably put a dull coat on him and then we'll be done with him. And now the cockpit uh, pulled out and I do want to do a little bit of lighting but it's very plain inside. It, the my, the uh, toy does come with some stickers put in there. Uh, they look kind of cheap and cheesy so we're not going to put that. I got some uh, more Greeblies uh, kind of cut in here. Uh, I believe this is the uh, uh, landing bait and landing gear doors for a Millennium Falcon. And I just kind of cut that and we'll put that in here somewhere to give a little bit more detail on the other side we'll have it'll be a little different but same kind of thing be some uh, landing gear details and I'm just trying to work out how I want to do I want to put some lights of some sort in there and have some lighting now, I've been working on the guns and those were probably one of the worst things as far as accuracy as you recall the uh, the uh, smaller gun I guess was off canned sideways instead of directly over top I simply cut those off and I've super glued on here and as you can see I've taken some of this uh, Bondo glazing spot putty and I've put it in here and I was going to have to put a little bit more and we'll sand it down, smooth it uh, smooth it out. Uh, this is a rubbery type material so it doesn't sand very well so it's taking a little bit to try to get that look good. Um, but here's the other one that's already been primed over and for the most part I'm pretty happy with it. It's a vast improvement over what it did what it used to look like and uh, we'll paint that up probably like a gunmetal color or something of that nature so at least it's in the right orientation and overall I think it looks pretty good considering what it looked at before 
And for the engines, we're going to add some 10 millimeter, um, probably some like orange lights in the back. So we'll have to drill out those holes. And here we have the back plate that we'll also have to drill out. And we'll have plenty of room for lighting in here. But we'll have some 10 millimeter orange lights that go back in here. So that's where we're at. And we'll just keep moving forward. All right, so here we are with the upper uh, body of the A-Wing. And just to show you, uh, right here we had the section where part of the cockpit kind of folded up and down. Uh, obviously, I don't want to do that. So I've um, cut off the main section from the uh, cockpit, the clear part, and glued it in position. Then I took some Bondo glazing putty and filled it in all across there. And now I've sanded it down, so I think we got a nice and smooth area. And we're going to put a primer coat over it and see how smooth it is. We may have to sand it down a little bit more. Uh, so there is where the top part is at. We've uh, taken the tail section and we cut some 10 millimeter uh, holes into the engine. And we've got some 10 mil millimeter lights that are going to be lighting it. And that will go in there and that will light it. And just working on a little bit of detail from the cockpit. And we still got some work to do on that, but it's coming along. We've had some greeblies and stuff of that nature. So just keep moving forward. All right, so when I was doing the part of this top part of the A Wing, I realized by looking at this smaller Bandai model that the hump on the back, uh, right behind the uh, canopy here, is up close to uh, the glass and not back here on the toy here it was mounted back here as actually a switch that you kind of could mash forward to let the landing gear down so i've uh, removed that cut it off and now i've moved moved it up here and super glued it i've added some styrene plastic right here to fill in that gap now i still need to sand it down i may have to put a little putty uh, but it'll be more accurate as far as what it should look like so kind of using this as a reference as, as to what to go by now the cockpit itself working on i have a uh, screen in there that'll be backlit and i'll have a little graphic on it and we'll have some other lights going on in here i still have to sorry let me get this in focus i still have to get this uh, painted up and um, this white right here is a styrene i'll paint over that yeah and then we'll finish uh, detailing the canopy so all that's uh, coming together and we'll just keep moving forward Hey, uh, this uh, update, uh, first of all, please forgive me for my voice. I'm catching a bit of a cold, so I sound a little bit funny or a little bit off. Anyway, just want to show you the progress I'm making uh, with the uh, body. We've applied the uh, top coat of it, and this is uh, Tamiya's Insignia White AS20. Uh, went on nice and smooth. The back back here where we did the uh, modifications, uh, I think turned out really good. We've moved this hump from, from up here to back here. We're actually covered in a gap and then uh, smoothed over the back and I think that turned out really nice. I think we did our, uh, I think there's just a small little blemish there, hardly even noticeable um, from where the putty just made a little crease, but overall I think that's uh, turned out really nice. I just want to get that in focus. So just working on that and we're about to start masking it off and I'm going to be doing the uh, body color uh, using this uh, uh, Vallejo's, uh, this is a brown RLM 26 and that's uh, 71.105 airbrush paint and we'll be masking off all the stripes very similar or actually I'm using this as an exact reference as to how we're going to paint it uh, but I've noticed in the studio model there are a few differences in the paint job very minor ones that I'm going to try and incorporate on this bigger scale so I'm going to mask it off and uh, paint it and we'll pick back up from there all right, so as you can see, we've done most of our basic painting now, and I've uh, applied a clear coat on it, and this is this from Krylon. This is a satin crystal clear, and I do that to kind of lock in the paint, protect the paint, but also as we move forward into weathering it and doing washes and uh, dry pastels, this will help a lot to protect the paint and be able to wipe it off, uh, the washes off without removing any of the uh, paint job that we just did. So we just masked off sections. I did have to change some colors. Uh, originally I painted a section with this uh, uh, brown RLM26. It turned out to be a little bit too uh, brownish color, though I did end up using it for some of these small panels, which I noticed 
it's more of a rust color and I noticed in a picture of a studio model that there were some offset colors in a few places but for the primary color uh, fortunately I had this in stock was a uh, from also from Vallejo now this is this their regular model color this is burnt red 70.814 I think that is a much closer match to what we're looking for and this is this our Bandai model this model wasn't painted it was just weathered that was the uh, colors that it came in so I think we're we're pretty close um, really close you know maybe this might be just a shade a uh, bit darker so but I'm happy with this uh, once we start weathering it doing washes all that's going to darken up you know once we do all that we'll add on a matte finish a dull coat to uh, dull all the shininess down so all that uh, that satin coat is just to protect the paint so we're working on that we can see where our guns are at they've come a long long way if you remember they were kind of canted off to the 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 top part of the gun was canted off to the side and really strangely and, and it was uh, just kind of a gray plastic now this was more of a rubbery type plastic it was a little bit harder you see where i've actually lost a little paint there when i was uh, masking off i'm gonna i might cover that up may not i may just leave it um you know just be a natural uh, you know whether i'm going to be uh, dry brushing some of this anyway and so it really won't be that noticeable and that's the great thing about star wars models is when you have something like that and you just blend it in as battle damage and we've added in our 10 millimeter leds and i gotta i'm letting them dry right now and then we're going to add a little bit more paint on top of that a little bit more orange paint i'm going to airbrush right down over top of that so we get one more coat you can just kind of see that they're uh it in and with a little hot glue holding them in i may add some um, aluminum foil or electrical tape to kind of um, block the light coming off that uh, this plastic's really thick i'm not uh, i haven't seen any uh, light leaks from that and we're working on lighting the cockpit so we're going to get more close to put it together but i think we're going to weather it all uh, while it's still apart because it's going to screw together and once it screws together you know it's, it's only basically you know a few pieces so um you really the seam, seam lines this are just kind of natural lines in the model so uh, i did do uh, some gray accents there and that was just done with uh, some model or light gray 71.050 so we'll just move on to weathering it all right so here we are with our finished customization of the kenner a-wing i'm um, sorry i skipped i know i skipped a lot of in between the last section of it uh just got busy i was kind of sick obviously the other day but not so sick that i was sick enough not to get to work but not so sick to i couldn't work on models so i just got busy and before i knew it i was pretty much done with everything so i'll just kind of walk you through uh what we finished up with um and the last section i painted it and um, I did do it in sections. I added a wash and I make my own wash usually. I have a couple of other brands, but I just take like some uh, black acrylic paint. I mix it in, uh, sometimes with window cleaner. In this case, I use this uh, mixture of, this is just some airbrush cleaner I make out of water. It's like 90% uh, water and 10% alcohol. And I just make that on my own. Anyway, I cover that with uh, over the sections of the model and let it dry for a little bit and then I just uh, brush it off with a rag. You can use a little bit of that water and alcohol if you need to if it's starting to stick onto the model and you want to remove it. So I didn't want a whole lot in there. I basically just want it uh, into the seams and different places just to kind of dirty it up and give it that weathered look. Now we, uh, let's talk about the lighting on the cockpit. Let's go ahead and turn these lights on. And first I'm going to show you the back here. Now I have, you can see they're lit. Uh, I have the 10 millimeter uh, uh, lights on but as you can see there there's a fuse right now i just have some cotton balls that are kind of kind of meshed up just a piece of a cotton ball really and uh, put in there just to kind of diffuse the light otherwise you just see this kind of bulb and looks kind of funny uh, maybe in the future i'm kind of working on uh, something that will diffuse that better uh, actually it doesn't look too bad i think it look, has kind of a cool effect to it like the engines are actually uh, have thrust coming out of it so that was kind of a cool effect and that kind of came up that at the last moment and uh, I'm going to remove the canopy here so we can take a look at the, uh, uh, our lighting on the dash of our A-Wing. And for this little screen right here, I had, when I built my Colonial Viper, I ordered a photo etch kit. Now that came with these uh, transparent slides that you used to, to backlight. And you just kind of back put the light behind it and shines. And it gave you several options. So I had several left over. So I used uh, this, this one right here, obviously. 
and uh, all I did was cut out a section on the cockpit here uh, kind of attached the screen to it and then with some uh, styrene some like half round and some uh, square styrene I framed it out uh, we cut a little section uh, put a little blinking red light behind that I filled it up with some testers window maker uh, there is a few little um, fiber optics attached in there you can see so we have a couple of different lights going on and I add in like a little uh, side light you can see down here you can see the little side light let me see if I can get that just gonna kind of illuminate the cockpit so we uh, that's uh, the lighting it's all basic pre-wired uh, type uh, LEDs uh, a lot of people ask me what do I use and most of the time I just use these uh, pre-wired LEDs come already with a resistor you can get these on eBay Amazon I, I miss getting them on eBay uh, different types sizes anywhere from like this is a three millimeter five millimeter up to like these 10 millimeter ones that we use for the back here uh, these are ones that are not terribly expensive uh, really simple you just connect the positive and the negative to your battery source uh, this is all running off a nine volt battery and it's in our base right here uh, this is detachable from the base it has a little auxiliary type plug that plugs in and out and it's also try to center it so it's holding the uh, vehicle in place <coughs> excuse me still not totally over my uh, head cold here uh, but we uh, did the uh, different things we uh, did some dry pastels of Tamiya's weathering kits uh, to kind of darken in the uh, certain areas I did some with black paint uh, looking at the studio model uh, I try to uh, emulate some of the uh, markings on it uh, it has some dirty spots on it and this kind of there's some very distinguishable ones that we can make out um, in different places of the model but so even some of the smaller ones uh, I try to get that close to what the studio model looks like I, obviously it's not an exact replica of you know this is a toy after all uh, but I think it really uh, really makes for a nice display beast um, the uh, scale seems pretty pretty good the details are nice of course we had the raised uh, panel lines that, but it's really not that bad it really doesn't take away much from me I think overall it really turns out to be a, a nice display piece there's a lot of room to do a lot more lighting if you wanted to attempt to do a, a lot more detailed cockpit there's a lot of room in there for lighting uh, engine effects things of that nature so and we just uh, I left my cockpit uh, untouched anyway after I got done painting I put on a coat of uh, matte varnish uh, you can always use something like testers dull coat and uh, I also use a little bit on that to do some touch-ups and so that's where we're at I hope you've enjoyed the project it was a lot of fun and uh, I think it makes for a great display piece we uh, just to take a look here is uh, Bandai's 172nd A-Wing and you can just see how much bigger this thing is it, it's it's more than twice the size I would say uh, I'm not sure of the exact measurements um, I believe the uh, action figure scale is something like 1 uh, 18th one, one, or 1 18th scale or something of that nature uh, so if the vehicle's in you get we're close to that and that kind of gives you an idea so a lot of fun nice display piece uh, not terribly expensive right now I think these are still pretty uh, inexpensive to find uh, but anyway uh, if you have any comments just let me know until next time we'll see you later